Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Christ is in our midst. He is in our midst. Brothers and sisters. <clears throat> Undoubtedly, it's a, it's a difficult time of the year uh, to be a Christian, the Christmas season. It's, it's a challenge for all of us. I think it was the day after Thanksgiving when Juliana and I were out for, for a run and we saw the neighbors in our, our area, were, they were finishing their, their Christmas decorations. They had their lawn fully loaded with all of the beautiful decorations that they had uh, come out with. And um, it reminded me of the long season ahead of us and how uh, eager some people are to start this off. Someday, I'm sure, we'll be starting Christmas in July. I mean, it just seems as if it's inevitable, isn't it? And there was even a, a, some people doing that a couple of years ago, I think. Um, and, you know, it's a long, long time uh, to be preparing. And in spite of that, the society is shifting and more and more people are not going to church at all for the feast of the Nativity of our Lord. Uh, I read in the paper that about, just about 20% of Protestant congregations, not a, hundred, not, not a full 20%, but just about it, 20% will not even be having a service on Christmas Day because it's inconvenient because people have other things to do. Obviously, we know that there are things to do that day. We have to get together as a family. We have to have a meal. We have to sit near the Christmas tree and take out the gifts and open them. And this is a sacred and hallowed custom in our society. And obviously, uh, you know, I went up to the, to the copy center the other day and the the onslaught of traffic that was approaching the mall out by Smith Haven Mall was phenomenal. I mean, it was like a tidal wave of traffic that just kept coming on and on and on. I don't know how many more people they could fit in that mall, but I was very happy that I didn't have any business going in there yesterday because it would really be difficult. But I think, you know, one of the most difficult things for me personally, is if I would hear that song, All I Want for Christmas is You, one more time. I'm, I'm probably going to go out of my mind. And yet, I'm sure that as soon as I go to get gas, because now you have radios and TVs at the gas pump, I'm sure I'm going to hear Mariah Carey again. And I, and I really can't believe that I'm preaching a sermon about Mariah Carey and her song, but it was actually written by Justin Bieber, uh, and, uh, or maybe he was the one who first sang it, but, um, but you know, I, the more you think about this song, All I Want for Christmas is You, you know, it's romantic, right? Uh, it's, 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 it tugs at your heartstrings, doesn't it? But, it's not as insipid as it seems because um, if you think about it from a theological perspective, this is exactly what God would be saying to us if he was to say something to us you know, face to face. If he was to speak to us in the parlance of the idiom of the day, this is what he would be saying. You know, he said to the Israelites, I'm not interested in your new moons, you know, or in your incense sacrifices, or in your burnt offerings. In the uh, prophet Malachi and in the prophet Hosea, we, we hear this kind of reflection uh, that God is not interested in our rituals. He's interested in what? He's interested in our heart. He's interested in what, where we really put our value, our, our, our real emphasis in life. And it's easy to do some kind of external thing 
some kind of superficial thing. Uh, but what's really hard is to surrender one's heart. And that's really what the song is asking for. It's for that personal relationship. It's for that connection between two people that I want for Christmas. I'm, she's, she's sort of repudiating all of the trappings of Christmas. She's not interested in the tree or the sound of the hoofs on the, on the roof, right? She's interested in this one person who she can't get and wants to have. And that's what God wants from us. He wants our love. He wants our connection, our interest, our time. And yes, in a day and age when it seems as if because Christmas falls on a Sunday, that the collision between Christianity, uh, as it's, as it, you know, it's sort of institutional Christianity, and Christianity in, in the field, as it's practiced, it couldn't be any worse. It couldn't be any more direct than the prospect that churches will close, not because they are being closed by the state, because of disease and illness, but they'll close because of indifference, because people are busy doing other things on the very day that commemorates the birth of Christ, which is the ostensible reason for these gifts being given. And we wonder what might have happened had those three kings just made a wrong turn that day. Uh, maybe we wouldn't have gift giving associated with the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and maybe it would be a completely different kind of day. But what God is asking for us is the gift that he's asking for. It's not a thing. It's not a tangible. It's an intangible. It's that attention and that time and that presence. You know, sitting in your room for 20 minutes in the morning, saying the name of Jesus over and over again and trying to block out other thoughts, reserving that time to be alone with him. That is what he wants. And it's, and it's the change that comes about in your life when you make that priority, when you give that um, time and attention to someone else who is important, who's extremely important, uh, that, is, that is what he wants. He wants that, that new life in Christ that we should be, should be cherishing. And if there is one thing about our newly illumined Kara uh, that has really impressed me, uh, Mary is her name now uh, in the church because she's taking the St. Mary of Egypt has her patron, which is such a wonderful thing. But Mary has impressed me so much with her dedication to this very work, this fundamental work in the life of the church, which is to pray, to, to, to stand before God with one's hands upraised and, and to commune, even briefly, with God, knowing that there is nothing that we can say and there's nothing that we can do that can really express the ineffable beauty and majesty and awe of God. But nevertheless, to take out those few minutes and to, to, to offer them in response to, to, that, to that desire of God, which he expressed over centuries in dealing with the Israelites, centuries waiting for them to give him all he wants for Christmas. And them consistently, 14 generations, 14 generations, 14 generations, not giving it and, and repudiating him, uh, po postponing him, telling him, we're busy now. We have to build a kingdom here. We have to go and do this and that and another thing. Uh, and God was patient, waiting and waiting and waiting for them to come to the maturity to the fruition of the work that he sought to do in their midst. And finally, at that right time, 
this ideal time in the history of the creation of the world came the moment, that sacred moment for the incarnation of our Lord and God and Savior, Jesus Christ. And so the question presents itself to us, are we going to be like the ancient Israelites and be unfaithful and ignore and, and refuse the a command of God? Or are we going to take that little bit of time from our busy schedule when we think we are doing things that are so necessary and so important? Are we going to take that little bit of time and acknowledge him and gather in uh, where he can come and dwell in our midst and reveal himself to us as the Emmanuel, as the God who is with us? That is the question that Christmas poses to us. That is the Christmas dilemma that we are faced with living in this modern world. And let us hope that as Christians, as those who are truly seeking to follow Christ, we will have the wisdom and the depth uh, of understanding to make the correct decisions so that we can, we will not have to close our church that we will not have to put out a sign that says, sorry, we are at home doing something else. But we can remain open and we can remain full as a, as a body, full as a community, full in the knowledge of the joy that comes into the world because of the incarnation and giving witness to that to all those who come here looking to see where indeed is it that Christ is born. Amen. Amen.